Too often, we take our bodies for granted. But under pressure, our bodies can show us how extraordinary they truly are. This complex machine grew out of millions of years of evolution. So intricate, we're still mystified by many of the things going on inside us. A hidden world, but one we can now explore in 3D as never before. At the top of our spines rides three pounds of tissue, controlling everything we do. Our brain works faster than any computer, processing an astounding 100 trillion instructions every second. But to save our lives, it can slow down time, tell us what to eat, even when to consume ourselves. And as we sleep, unleash immense power. Our brain drives our muscles and steers our lives when we're pushed to the limits. When firefighters face one of nature's deadliest forces, it seems impossible that they should survive. Yet six men walk away from a devastating firestorm unharmed. What saved them was their brains by making time run slower. A lightning strike ignites a fire in Little Venus, Wyoming. Ryan Jordan leads a team on a routine mission to make sure the blaze burns itself out. We're going to be there in a couple of hours. Over. But the fire isn't fading. The wind shifts, giving the flames new life. And they're bearing down on Ryan and his team. So as we were hiking in on the trail, about two miles in, we had some scratchy radio communications that the wind was picking up, the fire had changed some of its fire behavior and started burning down canyon. Any firefighter would know a nightmare was approaching. Repeat, this is a warning. Winds are changing direction. As we can tell, it's headed southwest. Could be headed your way, and it's moving fast. As Ryan hears the warning, his brain takes control. Deep in the brain, two parts, each an inch across, make up the control center. It manages our fight or flight response, hardwired by evolution. It drives us to act without thinking. The control center collects information from the outside. Normally, the data goes to the brain's thought center for study and reflection. But in emergencies, the controller works differently, signaling nearby areas that make up the disaster center. Without a thought, the firefighters' brains command them to flee. In a blink, the men take off. You could feel the heat of the fire starting to get closer on you. In your mind, you're wanting to run. That's your instinct, is to get away from this heat source. Stoked by gusts, the flames close in. In the firefighter's brain, the disaster center engages automatically. It orders release of a natural turbocharged stimulant, adrenaline. Their hearts beat faster. Blood is redirected from non-essential tasks, like digestion, to parts of the body that can mean the difference between life and death. Blood floods their muscles with fuel and oxygen. In a burst of strength, the firefighters race to survive, but the firestorm explodes faster. Their bodies are near collapse. But their brains are working furiously. When time seems about to run out, the human brain can pull an amazing trick. It appears to slow time itself, creating precious moments that might help us escape. We've puzzled over this for years. To help understand the effect, 
Volunteers were tested as they made their first stressful jump from a platform 150 feet high. They were given a display, which under normal conditions moved too fast to read. But perhaps a brain under stress could slow the numbers enough to register them. For all the jumpers, their descent seemed to last almost twice as long as it really did. Incredibly, some were able to make out the speeding digits. One explanation is that our brain sees in a series of snapshots. About 30 frames a second. In an emergency, that rate increases, letting the brain take in more information in less time. The effect slows time. As the flames near, the firefighters' brains are observing at maximum speed. Seconds feel like hours, giving them a chance to work out what to do. It feels like things are happening really slow. You have time to think about it, but it's actually seconds that you ran through. Should I run? Should we go up canyon? Should we deploy our fire shelter right here? With time stretched, the team can assess their critical situation. They agree to stop and take cover. Go, and just in time. You heard that fire and you felt that fire coming and you knew you were going to be going any further and you're relying on this, this fire shelter to save your life. You just, there's disbelief. You couldn't believe it was happening. Come in! Talk to me! You hang in there! After that fire passed, some people were really pumped up and excited from the situation. And, you know, some people were very quiet and kind of in shock and disbelief, wondering how in the heck did this just happen? Now I'm crawling out of a situation that I maybe shouldn't have survived. An aerial image shows where the team made its last stand. Each dot marks a firefighter's shelter. All around, desolation. This extraordinary survival story has its roots in the brain power that we all have. Every decision we make occurs at our brain's command, even what we think we choose to eat. We pursue nutrition with almost religious fervor even in forms that otherwise might make us sick. When the food's gone, our brains take over. Our brain controls every decision we make, even our taste in food. Our urge to eat resides deep in the brain. A walnut-sized lump of tissue is the brain's want center. We are only just starting to understand its many functions. Above all, it wants to feed. No organ is hungrier than the brain. It consumes nearly a fifth of the energy we take in. But the want center responds to the needs of the whole body for nutrients, including vitamins and other minerals. When the body runs short of anything, the brain drives us to mind-boggling lengths to fill the gap. As yachtsman Steve Callahan learned, Steve's boat sank, leaving him adrift, alone. He needed a miracle. I was basically in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I knew I was a long way away from any kind of uh, possibility of rescue. 
I put my chances of survival as very, very slim. When his rations ran out, Steve turned predator. Fish were plentiful. He wouldn't go hungry. But he had a big problem. It's rich in protein, but fish flesh lacks vitamins and minerals that the human body needs. On a flesh-only diet, Steve's body couldn't work properly. It would shut down and die. 